So here we are, just a few days after the initial reports that Zion Williamson was going to miss the first couple of weeks of the regular season with a sore knee, finding out that now he's going to be out six to eight weeks after undergoing surgery for a torn meniscus. I was already worried about Zion's health and long-term sustainability, and now this most recent news just makes me even more concerned. Welcome back, everybody, to your number one source for learning about everything related to sports injuries and sports medicine news. This video is going to be a follow-up to the one I did a few days ago talking about some of the potential injury risk factors for Zion. Now looking specifically at this news of a meniscus tear, talking about what that means, and then talking about potential implications for someone like Zion. Make sure and go subscribe if you like this type of content and want to stay up to date with future videos this upcoming NBA season, and let's get started. I first want to read the official report we got from the Pelicans because there's some language in here that's really important to understanding what's really going on. So they say, quote, Zion Williamson underwent successful arthroscopic surgery today to address a torn right lateral meniscus. The routine debridement was performed by Dr. Jason Folk with assistance from team orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Misty Surrey. The two things to take away from that are that it was the lateral meniscus and that they specifically said debridement as opposed to repair. We don't have any footage about when this exactly happened, so let's get right to our anatomy and talking about meniscus tears and what this means for Zion. We have two menisci in our knee sitting in the space between the tibia and the femur. Looking from the top down, we have a lateral meniscus that's on the outside compartment of the knee and then a medial meniscus on the inside of the knee. The two menisci are shaped differently and have different attachment points to anchor them onto the knee and onto the other ligaments, but they have a number of key purposes in the normal function of the knee joint. We think of them as shock absorbers, and really what they're doing is more evenly distributing the load carried throughout the knee joint, and then they also provide some stability to the knee joint between the position of the tibia and the femur relative to one another, among some other functions that we won't address in this video. The typical mechanism behind a meniscus tear is whenever someone has their knee partially bent, and then has some sort of twisting load applied through the knee joint. The amount of load that's being transmitted through the menisci is different depending on if the knee is straight versus if it's flexed. When it's flexed more, the load is being absorbed by the menisci, and so this is why that flexed position or knee bent is more susceptible to the tears. And really what's happening, if you've got this cartilaginous tissue of the meniscus between the two bones of the femur and the tibia, whenever someone's bending their knee, that's compressing the meniscus, and then whenever they twist, that's basically compressing and shearing the meniscus causing the different tear. As I mentioned early on, the wording of this release by the Pelicans is really important here. If someone's gonna have surgery for a torn meniscus, there's two general categories we can think about. Either repairing the meniscus, meaning saving as much as possible, trying to suture the meniscus back together, or doing a partial meniscectomy, meaning you cut out or debride part of the meniscus. Ideally, we want to preserve as much of the meniscus as possible, because the more meniscus that you remove, the more you're changing the way that the loads are carried throughout the knee. If you completely remove the meniscus, then suddenly all that force when you're walking is being transmitted and carried directly by the cartilage surfaces on the bone, as opposed to being partially absorbed by the meniscus. So surgeons want to salvage as much meniscus as possible and ideally do a repair rather than trying to actually cut out part of the meniscus. So in this case, I'm sure the surgeons want to try to do a repair but depending on the specific position of the tear, the type of tear, sometimes they can't do a repair because it won't heal, and they ultimately have to do a debridement where they cut out the torn, irritated piece of meniscus. Research has shown us that whenever you remove someone's meniscus entirely, the loads skyrocket that are being carried by the joint, and you have a risk of developing earlier arthritis down the road. That risk is much lower the more the meniscus you're able to preserve but if you have to cut out a piece of the meniscus because you're changing the way that the knee is loading biomechanically, you potentially put yourself at risk of getting arthritis earlier on or sooner. Now, in no way does this mean he's guaranteed to develop arthritis or be plagued by arthritis type symptoms in his career, but it's one of the long-term risks of having part of your meniscus removed, especially if you're an athlete. The next thing I want to address from this press release is that it was specifically the lateral compartment of the knee. And this is going to draw back on some of the topics we discussed in my initial video, talking about some of the different injury risk factors and particularly the potential alignment with his gait. Part of that ideal knee alignment is the way that the forces are distributed between that inner and outer compartment. If you have an extreme one way or the other, then you disproportionately load either that medial or that lateral compartment. If your knees are significantly bowed outward, you can imagine you're gonna be putting a lot more pressure on that inner compartment and sort of relieving the load on the outer one. But if your knees are collapsed more inward, 
Now suddenly you're sort of pinching or compressing that outer compartment more, which puts more pressure through that meniscus. One of the factors that determines a good outcome after a meniscus surgery is having optimal alignment of your knees so that you're not disproportionately loading one compartment or the other, especially if you've removed part of that shock absorbing capability of the meniscus. As I mentioned in my previous video with Zion being heavier, this is gonna put more load through his joints. And now if we're already dealing with a damaged meniscus that's had to have surgery, and you're putting excessive load and shearing through that meniscus, I can't help but be concerned for potential further risk of things down the road. People who are heavier are generally at more risk of arthritis without something like a meniscus tear. And then if we factor all this in with potentially poor alignment in someone's knees, you can see how these different factors to me are just compounding and making me concerned about really his sustainability going forward. Now it's important to understand that these things aren't guaranteed to happen. When we do research, we're talking about averages. There's people who are on both sides of that average and sometimes don't have any problems with arthritis after a meniscus surgery and don't have any problems with recurrent injuries or knee pain because of poor alignment. But we do this research because we want to identify these potential risk factors and hopefully intervene to keep athletes healthy and playing longer. If we can improve their overall joint health by doing things like improving alignment, improving movement patterns and jumping and landing patterns, decreasing body weight and decreasing the impact through the joints because it might help promote long-term sustainability in a player, then we want to know those things so that we can hopefully intervene. So I hope this video gave you guys some more education and insight into particularly meniscus tears and then some of the things that research has told us doctors we need to think about that could contribute to long-term health and problems down the road after these types of injuries. Let me know any questions or comments you guys have below about this type of topic and until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.